cruising in my Corvette. I'm cruising in my Corvette. We're going to go over C1 and C2 steering wheel configurations. We have a number of different applications here on the table, and I'd like to thank three people specifically because, again, this wasn't the topic we were planning to do. And on Thursday, we basically threw this together. And I want to thank Werner Meyer, Richard Dunham, and Tom Commandera for bringing original examples here. Um, Richard's going to talk specifically to the C1 generation. I'll talk to the C2, obviously, as we go through. Any questions, comments, understandings, information that you may have on things that may be different than what you're seeing, please share with the group, because again, we're here to learn. Hi, my name is Richard Dunham. Uh, I've been a chapter member for an awful lot of years. Um, I started um, restoring C1 steering wheels about 13 or 14 years ago, um, almost by accident. Um, but uh, at any rate, uh, Jim asked me to do a little bit of a blurb on them. I can't tell you how I restore them uh, because I don't have my uh, process patented and uh, I don't want people to steal my business. It's that simple. Uh, I'm going to start out, um, you probably laugh when you saw this one, but the reason I brought this example, I think this probably burned, it was given to me. Um, the plastic was burned off from it. Uh, I brought it to show you uh, how the uh, stainless steel spokes are attached to the steel ring. Uh, they're welded, they're supposed to be welded top and bottom if you want to pass it around and look at them. One of the things that happens to these wheels uh, in the process of age and use is uh, the quality control on these wheels uh, weren't real good and so if they didn't get that welded both top and bottom uh, the wheel will flex and, uh, and while using it and it will crack the plastic uh, and I, I also um, and I, uh, I repair that if you want to pass it around. Uh, the next example I want to show you, uh, this happens to be a Roman red uh, steering wheel. Uh, this one doesn't happen to have, um, there, there's, there's a mark. Um, the company that, I'm going to back up a little bit here, the company that made these wheels um, for GM was called uh, Inland Division of uh, General Motors. Did a couple of things with these wheels and I, I've never been able to understand it or any rhyme or reason. Um, some of them, uh, if you pass this one around, you'll notice that there is a seven stamped here uh, on the very top of, of the opening on, this, on the stainless. Uh, normally what happened was that that indicated that that, that was supposed to be the 12 o'clock position when the steering wheel was installed on the car. I'll pass this around so you can look at it. Um, they had, an, there was no rhyme or reason to what they put on, on uh, for that mark. Uh, a, this is the only one I've seen in seven. Usually there's a K or a J or, or a letter of the alphabet. But at any rate, uh, it also That's corresponded this is what I refer to as a bell and a block. And if you look at this block, you'll see that there is a zero cast in the very top edge of that block. You, I'll pass this around too and you look at it. That corresponded with that stamp. So in other words, uh, when that steering wheel was put on and it was put on with that number of the 12 o'clock position, it put the canceling pins in the right uh, area to be able to work properly when you brought your when you turned the corner brought your wheel back to center it canceled your turn signals that's basically what it is and that's I call these canceling pins yeah, this red one's got a K on it if anybody wants to if you want to pass that around to look at it that's what I mostly see is stamped on those wheels uh, you'll see that these um, we call them fossil cars uh, the 53 through 55s um, the early wheels were um, made out of hard rubber and they weren't real strong. What happens is um, owners uh, or whoever get in and out of the car and they grab the steering wheel uh, by one part or the other. You notice there's only one bar going across the center and so what happens is it'll crack these wheels right here where they adjoin the ring. And they're kind of a pain to restore um, because, of their, the, because of their hard rubber. And of course, the elements, uh, either heat or cold, 
is real hard on, on, on those steering wheels as it is on the later ones. Um, the colors on these wheels too varied uh, quite a lot. You'll see the 53 four wheels uh, usually were white with a red spoke, so the white cars were. Uh, with the exception of the 54s, the 54 pennant blue cars uh, had a, a copper center bar in the center of them and the ring was white. But that's the only exception. I, I just uh, restored a wheel for a car um, that uh, got a top plate with that bottom picture on it. Uh, this, the, the yellow one here, I think they called it Harvest Gold, didn't they John? Yes. And. Um, that was a challenge. Um, it's the, an Easter egg car. Yeah. The <laughs> first time I ever saw one of those cars was about 12 or 14 years ago. And we were at a regional judging event on the very end of Long Island. And uh, it was the first Harvest Gold one I had ever seen with the green. They're, they're a striking car. Uh, and we also had one of them at, uh, last month down at the uh, regional in Florida. Um, that Tim Mickey, my team leader, restored. Uh, beautiful car. But at any, any rate, um, we'll move on. Say, you know where the closest example is that anybody can go and see, right? Henry Ford. Exactly. Henry Ford has a 55 Harvest Gold. That's the only Corvette they have in their collection. I mean, one of the things that's unique about the fossil cars, too, is um, I'm reasonably sure that the, the wheel actually, the color of the wheel actually matched the hub. Uh, on the later ones, they didn't, uh, and, and the interior judges looked for that. Uh, moving on to the later wheels, um, you'll notice uh, on these wheels um, that I'm, I'm going to move to the holes on the stainless steel. On the 56-7 wheels, the, the, there's what is called a chamfer on these holes. Uh, on the stainless steel and the 56 7 wheels were different in that that chamfer was much more exaggerated and, on the front and the back. Uh, I learned that really early on uh, from from an old friend Tom Maxwell. Uh, but anyway uh, the 56 7 wheels are, are getting pretty tough to come by uh, and Jimmy Sandlin can tell you all about that. Um, the later wheels, the uh, 58 through 62s, you'll notice there's hardly any chant for it on it at all if you want to pass them around. Um, so, Richard, what is the year of the wheel that you're about? These, these wheels that I have here are uh, 58 through 62s. Um, the bells on, on these <coughs> wheels, uh, because they were made at a different facility, uh, there was a, a shade difference in the color uh, they didn't always match the bell, uh, and so the interior judges actually look for that. Um, anytime you see that bell, which is this part right here that matches the bottom part of the bell on the column, if it matches right on, the judges are going to probably take, make note of that and knock off a point or two. Jerry? That was most generally with the reds. <coughs> yes, the reds are real noticeable. Um, now, I've, I've got an example of a wheel right here. This is actually this steering wheel. You'll notice, um, and I didn't, I didn't touch on that. You'll notice the machining on, on these wheels on uh, the 56 through 62s. They have a circular brush pattern on the front of the wheel. And on the back, uh, it goes um, towards the center hub. It's straight up the spokes instead of being circular. On this wheel, this is actual, actually a reissue wheel, probably from sometime in the 60s. And uh, you'll notice uh, when I pass it around that the machining goes towards the center hub rather than circular, and there's absolutely nothing on the back. Uh, my team leader, Tim Mickey, I was admiring this wheel one day, and he said, well, you can have it for show and tell because there's nothing too much we can do about it. Do you want to pass it around? Like I said, I've been doing this for about 18, 19 years, and uh, I'm told that uh, I'm the only one in the country doing them right. The real interesting part about it is, you, you, every time I get one of these wheels in, I rarely, if ever, 
uh, see two of them alike. Um, now, these steering wheels had what is generally appears to be kind of a leather grain to them. They weren't even really leather grain. They were just almost halfway between a leather grain and some kind of a pebble grain. But um, that early generation styrene actually that you never you almost never see one with the with the graining still left on it. What you usually see is a smooth wheel. And those wheels actually that graining didn't wear off. It was that early generation styrene was so soft it just was annealed. In other words, it just flattens out. And so uh, that's usually why. Uh, the, big, the big damage that happens with these wheels is uh, the elements. The cars get left out, stored poorly or whatever, mm -hmm. and they are subject to um, cracking because of either extreme heat or extreme cold. You, you mold plastic around a steel core and they, when they're subject to either heat or cold, they have two different expansion rates uh, and they expand at two different rates. Well, of course, with that, when that happens, the plastic is going to crack. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right we're going to move into C2s now. Um, I'll be very careful with a couple of the wheels up here. I don't want to pass those around. Um, but we'll go through the 63 through 67s as we move forward. Um, basically, your, your 10 points originality, 10 points uh, condition on steering wheel and horn button. 63s. This happens to be 63 at this point. There are three saddle tan wheels on the table. All right. Two of them are 63s. One of them is not. <coughs> Let's see if you can figure that one out as we move forward. Um, from a 63 standpoint, they moved away from the competition wheel, which is what Richard talked about for the most part in the 56 to 62 range. And they went to a three-spoke conical configuration, right? So now they took that, that flat stainless steel stamping and they made a conical kind of form out of it. So it's actually got some 3D depth to it compared to the flat plane application. If you note, they also changed the configuration of the... Um, of the openings here, right? I, I call it a kind of a teardrop configuration. So that they put these new stampings in, instead of having three concentric holes that are increasing in size, they went to this teardrop configuration as well. Um, again, they still have the plastic on the outside. They got smaller in diameter. Okay, so the wheels that the C1 generation wheels, you're looking at 17 plus inch wheels roughly. These went to 16 inch. So if you take a, a, a tape measure, you'll measure about an inch difference in the diameter. Okay, the, for 63, there are two configurations. For the majority of the model year, they had the plastic molded to a specific color that would match up with the interior color. Okay, in late 63, and I'm talking very late, there's no break point on it. They were trying, they were starting to introduce the 64 and later wheel, and they went to a simulated grain. So they didn't have to have 43 saddle tans, 14 black, three reds to be able to complete the year. They went to the same, the same steering wheel as they went through. Okay, so that's very late 63 production. The break point is not known, so be aware if you're, if you're looking at a probably a June, July build 63, it may or may not be able to have that particular wheel. Anything prior to that most likely had a, had a color wheel that matched up with the interior. So, all right. Um, if you look at this particular wheel, it's got the con it's got the circular, um, circular uh, turning marks. In late '63, after Vin 18400, 18,400, they changed that. They went to uh, more of a radial style mark. So there's definitely a difference in the '63 wheels as we progress through into the various ranges of the production year. Okay. Um, again. The, six, the 56 to 62 wheels are installed with the, with the Y or the, uh, the spokes at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 6 o'clock. They flatten these things out. I don't think it's really 10, 2, and 6. It's more like 10, uh, 9, 30, 2, 30, and 6 o'clock. Okay, so that's the way the spokes are installed when the, steel, when the wheels are straight. If you install it like that, it'll go in there like that, but the horn button won't line up. All right, again, there's four colors in 63. And... There are two saddle examples up here on the table. There's black, dark blue for Daytona blue applications, as well as red. 64 to 66, this is a standard wheel for 64 to 66. 
65, they, there was actually an optional wheel. We'll talk about that in a second. We are fortunate to have one of those in the room. I want to thank Warner for that. I will not pass that around, and I request you not to pick it up as we go forward. That's a very rare and unique wheel. Um, this particular wheel, as we move through for 64 to 66, again, it's very similar in configuration to 63. A few things changed, right? So now we are, we've got the simulated wood grain. Sometimes it's called walnut colored wood. Um, I've seen it, it, it's pretty much a little bit darker than the, than the optional wheel that occurred in 65 or 6, as you can see. Uh, very similar in configuration again. The, um, back to the comments on the turning marks. If you take a real close look at this one, it's got what the, is called radial turning marks. So it's basically, the marks are across as opposed to circular around on the diameter. Okay, so that will be the configuration difference for the wheels. Um, let's see, again, teardrop style cutouts in the spokes. And again, kind of installed at that same position, that 9.30 to 2.30, 6 o'clock position. All right. Let's talk about the optional wheel for 65 and 66. They came out with an actual wooden wheel. We are fortunate to have one here in our possession. It's a teak wood wheel. And as you can see from the configuration, it's made up of multiple pieces of, of wood that basically attach to the, to the steel frame or to the steel wheel. Uh, very similar configuration to all the other wheels for the, for the steel configuration, with the exception of now we have lamination of wood. So it's called teak. It actually has teak and rosewood in it. And if you look at this particular wheel, this is an NOS wheel. So if you look at this particular wheel, I'm not going to hold it up. Um, you will see, you'll see basically um, the separations in the different pieces of wood. And the way it's set up, if you read through the book, the, um, the interesting part about it is this wheel is definitely configured correctly. The, the split lines for the wood lamination points around the center spoke at the bottom aren't in the center, but they are at the very top. So if you take a look, you'll find that the, 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 uh, the interfaces between the multiple pieces of lamination would be correctly configured for what we would look at. You should have a, a mark in the very center of the top of that particular steering wheel and off to the side from the very bottom spoke. And the, the thing that you'll note is the color, there'll be color variation changes based upon age, how long it's been out in the sun, how much glass, the clear protective outside to it is what it looks like to me. Or they're oiled or waxed or something, right? They're, it's not bare wood. Right, no, it's, right? I think it's varnish or something. It looks like there's a varnish. So, based upon the amount of UV that hits it, obviously it's going to change a little bit. Some of the stuff that I've seen on the uh, some of the internet auctions, they're darker than this particular wheel. You turn Again, the yellow too a little bit because I think because the varnish is you know, sprayed it on there. Right. And if you take a look compared to the to the 64 to 6 wheel, you can definitely see it's a little bit lighter shade. So 67. We happen to have another fine example here uh, on the hub. And I'm glad that Tom brought it in and, had, and left it on the hub. Um, the, again, very similar configuration with one major exception. If you look at the cross webbing here, they are no longer a one piece form. They are actually now two pieces. So this spoke is different metal than this spoke. So you got one piece of, or one piece of stainless that goes across that forms this particular spoke, and this spoke is offset, all right? If you look at the hub, the hub is different. The hub is no longer flat. It actually has a notch incorporated into it to accommodate that separation or that, that change in, in the offset of the material, okay? Again, very similar in, in configuration, very similar in colorization, and, and then that wheel, that configuration is consistent throughout much of the C3 era until mid-70s. Again, 16-inch wheel diameter, simulated wood grain with pronounced grain. Spokes now have, are, are in the same configuration. They have the brush flat, um, smooth, uh, the smooth brush finish running the length of each spoke. And again, we talked about the offset. And it's installed in virtually the same configuration, right? We're at 9.30 and 2.30 as well as 6 o'clock. And we've got the simulated wood. Thanks, Richard. Well, Richard, Jim, thank you. Well, we are...